Libby Russell called Love Poem to Young Offenders Support Workers. Here, where the streetlights have seen more than any expert, there is a currency in the green ghosts of cheap chains hidden under collars, or in knowing somebody's brother from school, or in the phone numbers of people who know how to scoop up boys spilling out onto pavements, their limbs limp as weeds, without calling for sirens and warrants and lights. People who know what to say to young men with grey faces, trembling blood onto paving stones, and how to empty their hands without trouble. Here, where there are no newspapers, talk is never cheap. There is a currency in handlebar seats, and boys know the value of dragging each other home. That was by Libby Russell, and it's called Love Poem to the Young Offender Support Workers, and it is in the uh, the Foyle Young Poets of the Year anthology from the Foyle Young Poets of the Year Award last year. Um, I was dead proud to be a patron of these awards, and uh, I received this in the post earlier in the, in the week, and uh, it's a, it's phenomenal, so I just had to read a poem from it. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Matt Abbott. Welcome to uh, Insta Session number 40. Number 40, uh, which is, we're on the final straight now, creeping towards 50, which is mad. Um, for those of you who don't know, I started these Insta sessions at the beginning of May last year. Probably thought I was going to do about 10. Here we are with number 40. Uh, and yeah, basically every week I invite a guest poet on to share their work and to chat. Um, I've had poets from all over the UK. I've had poets from Pakistan, Nigeria, Sweden. Um, it's been incredible. And tonight... Uh, I'm very, very happy to be joined by Penny Pepper. So Penny uh, is currently based in Hastings. Uh, she is an acclaimed author, poet, performer and disabled activist. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really excited to see what Penny shares tonight. I first came across Penny's work uh, as part of a, a political poetry campaign back in 2015 in the lead up to the election called Firm Against Apathy. So I shall invite Penny to join. Here we go. Instagram's just linking us up. Here we go. Hello. Hello. How Hello. are you doing? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, spot on, yeah. Brilliant. Like I did that at the last minute, Matt. Panic, but my phone is working fine. So good. Good, good. I'm so pleased that you could make it tonight. Thank you so much for doing it. Well, I'm just I feel absolutely honoured and chuffed. And I'm I'm not being disingenuous, I really do. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, absolutely cool. love the nymphs and thugs. Well, thank you. I know, yeah, because you've you've submitted your work a few times for the, the poems that I share on the feed, which I was like, yeah. Oh wow, Penny Pepper. <laughs> so yeah, yeah great. <laughs> well, um well, thanks for that, Matt. But it, it the irony is for the sort of work I do, um it's not always easy to get your work accepted. I've got a bit of a thing about that at the moment. Um, right. And I think, have you had Stephen on, Stephen Lightbone? Yeah. Yes, you have, haven't you? And um, he's another poet I admire greatly and who writes about disability a certain way. But we're, we're such a tiny minority and people get scared of us. So... You know, bring it on, bring it on. That's, I mean, like, obviously, I, I realise that I speak with a lot of privilege here. That just blows my mind. I can't imagine that in 2021 that that would still be. I, I appreciate that accessibility at venues is, is a massive issue, but I wouldn't have thought that, you know, submissions would be an issue. That's mad. And there's a, there's a double, um, there's a dilemma with it in that sometimes it's to do with a fear from publishers um that no one's interested but you know other groups that have experienced depression have had that in the past so it's it's like we're, we're dragging and if you bring intersectionality into that it, it just becomes worse and worse and worse you know i'm a working class woman of a certain age um if you're um a black disabled poet it, it just it just gets kind of into this tiny little ghetto um thankfully there are great people out there including quick shameless plug the wondrous burning eye books which is a it's a cover to die for isn't it by Liv yeah, yeah. um 
and they didn't they just didn't have any issue with me it was just yeah we like your work and we like what you've submitted so here we go mm -hmm. and that's how you want it to be but uh as i like to say i'm i'm, I'm an aging punk i'm not as old as johnny effing rotten or madonna <laughs> But I'm in that age group, and you just think, am I, am I, where are the younger writers, where's the disability voice, and the disability voice in terms of inclusion, experiencing oppression, we're still, there's a lot of education to be done around that, disabled people are, they are disabled by the way society is organised, and that, that route is connected to a lot of people it's about negative attitude the imposition of barriers uh lack of information um i wrote a big thing about this for the the, the mighty byline times which i absolutely encourage everyone to look at and yeah. read and subscribe but it's they're lovely guys they they were just yeah uh We'd love you to write for us, and they've been so brilliant in welcoming me and, you know, just just giving me great feedback. But I tried to point out how it's the, the barriers model, if you like, that's made our experience with COVID so shit. Am I allowed to swear? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well that's all right but obviously for me i'll always be doing this always writing poems always writing stories and every now and again i get a little twitchy i mean I, i'm very full i'm very privileged i do have an agent the most wonderful agent with the good literary agency and obviously i know lots of lovely people within the spoken word scene yeah. and and beyond and, and they've always been welcoming to me um you know a highlight was performing on the same bill with selena um hastings girl yeah 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 <laughs> so that uh, that was at the royal albert hall you know never oh, wow. in my wildest dreams would you think that when you're a struggling little punk poet trying to get something <laughs> in fancy so yeah I feel like I'm rambling now, Matt. Ask, no. ask. <laughs> Everything you've said is 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 fascinating, and I'm so pleased that you've shared that. I mean, we've gone straight in, but that's so, um, like shocking. I, it shouldn't be really, but hopefully, you know, times will change. I mean, surely one way to combat people's fear or awkwardness or prejudice is to is to have more people speaking about disability through poetry. Like it's the ultimate window into, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. And also, I like, you know, I'm told I have sort of wit and wisdom in my work. And you can be funny. And you can, you know, but you you can be sharp, funny and compassionate yeah. all at the same time. I think that um, that's actually that kind of area is what I admire in Selena's work, where you can... You know, you, you don't you don't have to whack people with a big stick, but it's all it's even down to the fact I wasn't born disabled. The majority of people weren't. Yeah. So it's not about it's about part of the normal experience of human life, but you wouldn't know that because you don't see see any of us. You know, I yeah. you don't see us uh, greatly on the telly, and you certainly don't see many of us greatly writing scripts or. I've got a novel out now and my agent is fighting the fight as a, a great warrior to, to interest. What do I call it? On submission, I think. But fingers right. crossed. I think it's, you know, that will happen. Um, and can, I'm going to do, really, you don't mind me doing another shameless plug, do you? No, of course. <laughs> Go for it. Of course so, not. <laughs> well, Burning Eye did this, and it is still available from the big cartel. I'm very, very proud of this. I am looking to do a pamphlet, and I wanted to read at least one of the poems that would go in the pamphlet because it's called Bodies, Mine and Yours, and okay. I've got it all in my head. And it's a little bit about different aspects with the NHS and... But I've seen it from such a, I was ill as a child, um, 
running around like a mad thing till I was 14 and I became a wheelchair user. But when you get into that culture almost, you see the NHS in a very different way. Yeah. Um, so I really want to explore that, but also the tricky, delicate issues around sexuality and um, even, look, nipple. It's a Botticelli nipple. But it was... Um, <laughs> B Hart told me that Facebook didn't like it. <laughs> right. Well, we know what we think of that up yours Facebook, yeah. but totally. it is that's <laughs> just so. Um, it that that's just it's so typical. And uh, I did once start a kind of John Cooper Clark homage. Um, there's one in the book, but there's another one which was about. <laughs> Apologies, warning for language here, but for some people, but, you know, I am a punk and I reclaim language. But this was about um, you'll never see a cripple exposing a nipple um, and getting in a pickle um, in the sun or the mail. <laughs> so, because, you know, there's that weird kind of contradiction that you can be this thing but you can't be that thing so i can yeah. have a botticelli nipple which live talk really beautifully created there but uh i'm very interested in exploration of the body beyond what is obvious i suppose I totally. should say. so do you want me to read one that would be wonderful yeah sure thank you okay. um i'm gonna read it, and it is a, it's a little change in tone for me. So let me just read uh, this short one. And it's called Nurse Abdul. You travelled from that place. Men weeping, women shouting, children dead. What secret journeys have you made to put on this English nurse's blue? War, absent from your cautious eyes, diffident speaks in a thousand travelled tongues. And I, my vein, is cannulated before your gentle touch brings more questions than you can have answers for. Oh, brilliant. I'm very... Oh, I, I'm... Very, very kind of intrigued and very protective of, of uh, the NHS and the wonderful people that work for it. And that was based on a, a, a true event where this guy called Abdul, he just said to me, I come from Afghanistan because I'm so nosy, I always ask. And I realised how much cliche, cliche and prejudice, maybe you know, not conscious prejudice that just comes up and you think, you think, what, how? But he was such a lovely guy and uh, he found my difficult vein straight away. So there you go. There you go. But I, I want to honour him and others. So anyone out there looking for a pamphlet, a poet, uh, poets and pamphlets, I would, I would love to do one. I really would. Sounds good. Well, there's, yeah, there's so many, I mean, obviously Burning Eye that you mentioned are uh, 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 superb, but there seems to be a couple more springing up. It seems like alternative indie presses, poetry presses are on the rise, which is nice. Yeah, that's a good thing. And it, it reminds me of my younger days in the punk scene where that that was my food as a writer. Because, yeah. you know, if access is bad now, then it, then it just wasn't even a concept on <laughs> anyone's mind so i was very much bedroom punk but i bought the enemy and, and and whatever and ordered absolutely everything what's great though is some of those things lasted and even now i occasionally people realize or they've heard me on the radio or something and they'll say hang on um I've got your poetry about the Brixton riots from blah, blah, blah. And you think, wow, I haven't got them. But <laughs> it, so that, that link through time and, and event is, is very powerful. Yeah. It's, also, it's also a reminder to everybody, never give up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never totally. Give up. totally. Um, 
Great. Do you fancy sharing another poem? I will, on the same sort of theme. Um, this one is... It's called This Young Nurse. This young nurse, she wears rose perfume, smiles on a happy hum. Her arm stretches, this young nurse, to reach the patch, the sticky circle plaster to reposition. This young nurse, hair falls in black curls across curious eyes, across her warm beige cheek. This young nurse puts commitment into each movement like healing. <laughs> Beautiful. Love Thank that. you. Thank you. Oop. I mean, Matt, I, I, you know, like, I can chat about anything, anywhere, forever. And I, you know, I love it when people ask me questions. It can, it's good to be provoked. <laughs> so, okay. Um, as a punk, um, as an original era punk, as you've described yourself, do you feel like there's more apathy now? Um, as in, you feel like now, punk, This times like now are made for punk. Do you feel like we're drowning in apathy or am I too cynical and actually it's just happening in a different way? Like as a writer, you know. Oh, I think, I think there is some apathy and COVID has not helped. I also think from a number of contexts that um, it's never been easy, it's maybe not quite the right word, but there, there are ways to get your stuff out there that just before the, you know, the internet and even being able to print things. And I think there's quite a, a zine, a zine kind of culture that's, much more available to say i'm going to do this and i'm going to do this now yeah maybe be, maybe because it's so easy you don't fight as much but certainly within and i'm always talking to uh disabled poets about how they can action that and how they how that can become a real thing but on the other hand i think this is also to do with the biased news because we don't really get to hear about these things easily. Right. I live in, in Hastings, Matt. It's it's rad. It's radical stuff here in Hastings. We have everything. It's known. We we had we've had everyone here from Alistair Crowley to um oh god at a, at a blank the um my other half will kill me Robert <laughs> Robert Tressel the ragged trouser philanthropist. Great right, yeah. list tract. He based the characters on that on people in um, in Hastings. So it's got a radical edge. There's no way. I I used to live in Islington near Dalston, uh, and that was okay as London goes. I lived there a long time, but it's it's it has nothing compared to Hastings because you feel an art. There's a, there's an active arts community involving all different levels of class and society doesn't yeah. always work but often it does where you, you feel you're genuinely able to join in and i think that you don't really ever hear about that apart from on your own back door and that's that's difficult i think we have to keep that little glimmer of hope you know yeah. pessimism's for lightweights totally well this <laughs> totally. is what i was going to ask next because like um, on the one hand, you're saying uh, it's so much easier to get stuff out there, for example, putting a poem on Instagram, doing a gig like this, you know, it's a lot easier to get stuff out there. But at the same time, as you said, you don't have to fight as hard, so therefore it's easier, more disposable. Would you rather be a, a, an emerging poet now, where you can put everything online and make all these connections, um, but it's a bit throwaway, or in the original punk era when it's a lot harder but you make interpersonal connections and go to events and like dig stuff out and find it which one do you think is more uh, beneficial if that makes sense uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be a diplomat and say neither <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, because, sorry. because I think 
Um, I think they've both got value. I mean, I can't, obviously, who can imagine how their life might have been in a different era or whatever. Um, but look, but because yeah. of course I've got the great gift of hindsight, so I can look back and think, oh, that that made me. That those things made me. I made an album in as well, and and did the whole North London music scene. And in in fact, oh, I should have had it. I, I, before we go, I found the first cassette album I made, which was of poems. Amazing. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's interesting that. But I think now it's more about finding your way amid the absolute uh, ocean of available material. Yeah. Um, and, and, and as we know, you've got great publishers like Burning Eye, and there's a few of them around even who, you know, publish fiction and whatever. And then you've got this sea of this foul commercialism where they only want safe bets and they're regurgitating safe bets and so on. Yeah. And I wish we could all break that down a bit to say, I, I really believe like the good literary agency kind of approached me and they absolutely believe from their own experience and evidence, readers want story. They want different perspectives. They want poetry they really do. The idea that no one in this country would like poetry with the great, at our best, at our, you know, our diversity, um, an overused word, but it's true. It's unique. Yeah. We have so many great unique voices to call on and we know people want to hear them. We do, but yeah, of there is a barrier. It's another con social construct again. That's oh no, you can't do it if you're working class. You can't do it if you're a woman, and if you're that old or that young, or um, you know, um, then all the issues of white privilege come in, um, and it it's it becomes a mess. I think the hardest thing for poets now is is competing in that mess. So the fight is still there. Yeah. Um, like I know that it, it, the irony is that the higher my profile, and it's not bad profile, but the higher it is, the less I'm a risk to a publisher. Right. I, I believe that Burning Eye don't have that attitude, which is great. No. Um, I I know they don't. But it is – so it's difficult to find someone who – will trust your work as a starting point. Um, and I think that's true now as it's always been. It's just, it's kind of shifted into a different arena. Now it's about making sure you um, keep at it in a different context. Before it was just the plodding on, you know, getting into fanzines. And I would say my spoken word work didn't really take off until about 15 years ago. And that was because I realised as a poet, I'd done some training as a performer, which was great, and people were very encouraging. And I had some, um, I went to a few um, classes with people like Steve, oh, what's his name? Mm -hmm. I forgot. Steve Camden? Steve t t t t t Oh. Tassane? All right, yeah. yeah. Um, apples and snakes. And apples and snakes help me a lot, actually. I'm not quite sure what they're doing these days, but they really did. I went to so many masterclasses, and um, and I always encourage people now to to realise that if if you're running anything and you don't have access for disabled poets, you're not truly inclusive. Yeah. There's no negotiation on that. You're just not. And you get into this circular argument where oh well no one no one disabled ever asks to come along and you think well that might be because the last 10 courses you've run were up three flights of steps so that doesn't look welcoming <laughs> and it can be all sorts of things like you haven't thought to put your it's not just about wheelchair users um i'm very pleased that we have much more of a awareness about invisible 
impairments and chronic illness. Um, it's what happens to human beings. It's not really, it shouldn't be seen as different or other. Yeah. It's part of the story. And I'll be saying this to my last bloody fecking breath. <laughs> Do you think that this period of, of sort of enforced reflection that we've all had might improve it? I mean, obviously it's easy for me to say, but I feel like because of the murder of George Floyd very early into lockdown one brought the Black Lives Matter movement to the forefront of everyone's discussion. But I do yeah. feel like obviously the removal of physical accessibility issues with zoom etc i feel like the whole people are thinking about everything but maybe yeah. that's me being an optimist do you, do you feel like it, have you noticed that people are maybe more receptive maybe more I think, that, I think so i think people and I, I think it's important that it isn't just a certain age group or type or but i also think I, I mean, I'm always an optimist, absolutely always an optimist at, at the end of it all because we have a precious life. We have a, you know, a planet we need to treasure and enjoy and we have friends and love we need to treasure and enjoy. So can we just keep on that? And it sounds like wet, hippie, punk shit, but it's true. No, <laughs> but it's I, true. I think yeah. it's, all, it's all there is in the end. And... I mean, I'm, I'm working on a very difficult poem at the moment, um, which is a Sestina. Right, yeah. Very tricky Sestinas are. <laughs> I should do a little Insta about how difficult they are, but I really love them. And it's about when I was literally punched awake by racism. So, and this was when I was 12 years old, I didn't know what racism was. My best friend was black. And then suddenly there were these sort of adult influences coming in, making me wake up. I know we say that a lot. We got the whole woke conversation, but it was, but it was awful. And I was punched by um, a family member um, that I couldn't have a black friend and I was, I, I just, I, I truly hope some of that's better. That's a long time ago, but I just think we, we, we have to start taking responsibility. Yeah. How we think, not allowing, um, not allowing little things to slip. I mean, I won't do it on disability, and I won't do it on race. You know, where you think, oh well, they're. Yeah, they're too old or too young, so I won't bring it up. But I think we have to bring it up. Yeah, it's our duty to bring it up. It's our absolute duty to bring it up. And I, there are ways of doing it um, that are more appropriate to to any situation. But let's let's just not do that anymore. Let's, you know, let's um, fight this, but keep optimistic. Totally. Um, I really feel we have to, or that we should stay optimistic. It, it's absolutely the only way we can go. And poets should keep writing <laughs> and writing wonderful things, hopefully. We all hope for that. Um, yeah. And, absolutely. you know, we're nearly near the end, aren't we? Woo! Look at that. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter if it overruns a little bit. I'd love, to, if, yeah. I'd love it if you'd be up for sharing at least another poem. I'd love to hear one if, if you're game. Oh, I'm game. I'm game. Uh, I don't have to do a funny one now because we've been quite serious. <laughs> you do whatever you want. It's totally cool. Yeah, I know. I know. No, I want... Uh, because in the book, I'm wondering what to do. <laughs> Scrounger. Yeah, I'm going to do one called Scrounger, which is one of my. Uh, there's a bit at the end, and, and when I perform this, everyone joins in, and I'm sure you've had <laughs> that, where it's it's the most wonderful thing. I did this at a Jeremy Corbyn rally. <laughs> I just remembered that. And to have everyone echoing that we, we, you know, the fight back bit was great. So this is called Scrounger. I'm sure um, a lot of everyone out there will know what I'm relating to. So... And I do hope everyone knows what a raspberry is. Do you? Cockney slang. Yeah. 
No? Raspberry no. Ripple. Cripple. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. My missus is going to kill me. As well, yeah. Anyway, because it comes up in this. I'm a sponger, a scrounger, a lazy ass lounger, a raspberry in rainbow. I pose you no danger. I'm the bottomless pit of your pity and debt. I'm the six since John Major. I'm still on it yet. I'm the latest cheap target, tabloids, dark darling, draining the markets, the unit of measure, economic displeasure. I'm a blamed, useless eater, a foul fraud repeater. Do I make it all up? They say that I suck the money from purses of rich, bloated bastards. The kicks and the curses fall from us leaders on us liars and bleeders. We're pariahs and feeders, gorged on too much from the big nanny state. You've condemned us already, there is no debate. We can't be sustained because bankers are greedy, we're lazy, we're rank, we're targets of hate to eradicate. But I'm a rouser with words to shout and to hit, saying who are the Nazis raking over this shit? I shout and I spin at the string of their lies. I'm a new Bodicea. Together, let's rise. They have no compassion, yet we own rebellion and rage with our passion. As time is rushing, defiance, it chimes. We dare to fight back. We dare to fight loud. We dare, we dare, we dare. Brilliant. There we go. Love that. <laughs> Love that. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much. I mean, what a fascinating insight and just uh, some of the stuff you said, it's just so powerful. Thank you. I really Thank appreciate you. your time. And um, this goes on to YouTube, doesn't it? If that's all right with you, yeah. yeah. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, You're everybody. Uh, so, yeah, because you've got your um, penny on the uh, penny, penny on the telly. Penny. Yeah, please yeah. subscribe. I'm trying to really yeah. build up, and it, it can be a slow process. But um, yeah, there's more of my work on there. I just won an award. I'm very excited Amazing. for a monologue um, that, where the performance is by great actor Liz Carr. Some of you may know Liz Carr if you watch Silent Witness, but uh, she is an absolute force of good and such integrity and a powerhouse of change and I'm honoured that she's one of my best friends. So she did that for me um, because I am her friend. Um, so please watch it and comment and there are lots of I did a poetry thon on National Poetry Day so there's a lot of poems on there too. Thank cool. you Matt. Thank you Nymphs and Thanks. Thank you Penny. Take care. Thank I'll see you soon. Thanks. Yeah, stay in touch. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Oh, be a sec. Sorry. I, don't, I never know how to do Oh, here we go. Oh, I know. <laughs> See you later. Bye. And that was uh, the wonderful, uh, inimitable uh, Penny Pepper. Uh, please check out Penny's YouTube channel, as Penny said, Penny on the telly. Uh, check out Penny's website and give Penny a follow. It's at Penny Pep on Twitter and the Penny Penny. Uh, sorry, the Penny Pepper on here. Um, yeah, that was great. My name is Matt Abbott. Thank you very much for watching. We are in some thugs. We're back next week, session number 41 with Liam Xavier. Thank you for all your wonderful comments. And uh, yeah, take care. I'll see you then.